What's up, everybody? This is the Sports Leak Podcast. Back for another week. I'm your host, Alex Leak. Uh, we got another great week. No Amanda this week on this episode, but she'll be back next week for the recap. So this is the 2023 NFL Week 17 preview. Uh, we hope you guys had a great, happy holidays and a, a Merry Christmas, hanging out with the family, watching the games and eating good food. Um, let's talk about Thursday night, the 6-9 and nine Jets at the 10-5 and five Browns. A great game here. I mean, it's just amazing to me to see what Joe Flacco is doing in Cleveland and the success that he's having. And, uh, you know, it's amazing to think about how good this team could be how deep this team could go in the playoffs. Um, no Trevor or no Zach Wilson once again. So Trevor Simeon gets the start. Browns come in on a three game winning streak, but no Amari Cooper who broke the franchise record for receiving yards just last week. So he was out. So we were wondering if that was going to, you know, make this game a little bit closer, but that wasn't the case. Joe Flacco is continues to stay red hot and on fire, uh, throwing all over the Jets as they get the Browns jump out to a twenty-seven to seven lead in the first half and win easily, thirty-seven to twenty in Cleveland. I mean, they scored thirty-four points in the first half, like they were just putting it on them and. Uh, the Jets were out of this game rather quickly. Uh, the Browns clinch a playoff spot for the first time since 2020. So, you know, that's cool to see. Uh, Joe Flacco throws for 309 yards, three touchdowns, and one interception. Flacco now has thrown for 300-plus yards in four straight games. I mean, what he's doing is incredible. And the thing about Joe Flacco is, like, we know he's capable of going on a deep playoff run. We've seen it before. He's won a Super Bowl MVP. He's gone 11 touchdowns, no interceptions in a playoff run and beat Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. And, uh, you know, some people are going to say, well, he's not in his prime anymore. But when he did it, he had the number one defense in football. And that's always been the recipe for Flacco. And once again, he's got this Browns defense, which is number one in football, right there with the Ravens, top two defenses. So it's going to be interesting. You know, the recipe is there for these Browns to go on a deep run. Uh, Jerome Ford combines for 121 yards and two touchdowns. You know, early in the season, I, I believe it was week two when they lost Nick Chubb for the season, you know, Things weren't looking good for Cleveland. They wondered, everyone wondered if they could bounce back from that, but they've done an excellent job. Jerome Ford doing his thing, Kareem Hunt filling in, you know. Uh, They're not missing a beat. The Browns have dealt with a lot of injuries this year, but they're now 11-5. and Who would have thought? Um, And then David and Joku went crazy. I mean, he had 113 receiving yards in the first quarter. Uh, and I tweeted out, I was like, is the Bronco, or is the Browns franchise record for receiving yards going to get broken two weeks in a row? But he, he finishes six catches, 134 yards, but he was on fire. Um, Trevor Simeon, 261 yards passing, one touchdown, one pick. Brace Hall combines for 126 yards and a touchdown. Uh, And we had a pick six by each team. Ronnie Hickman for the Browns, their rookie safety, with a pick six. And Jets defensive end Jermaine Johnson with a pick six off of Flacco where he bats the ball up in the air, catches it, and then runs away from uh, the the Browns. So uh, a fun game, honestly. It it was a blowout, but an entertaining game. Uh, the Browns win their fourth straight and improve to 11 and five, second place in the AFC North. And uh, but they're going to be a tough out. Nobody wants to play this Browns team in the playoffs. You know, four game winning streak right now. 
And who do they play in week 18? At the Bengals. Another winnable game. So if the Browns can take a five-game winning streak into the playoffs, you know, people are going to be – are not going to be excited about playing this team. As of right now, who I think they're going to have to play, I've got the the playoffs set up as how, how I think it's going to happen. It would be the Browns at the Jags, the winner of the AFC South, really. So whether it's the Jags or the Texans or the Colts, I think it's going to be the Jags. Either way, none of those teams wants to – play the Browns and I think the Browns might be favored in in that matchup regardless of who they play so uh, that's going to be interesting for sure um, and then for the Jets I mean you you look over there at Joe Flacco kicking your ass and, and you think we could have had Joe Flacco and he was actually on the Jets from 2020 through 2022 for three years like, why the hell not bring him back when Aaron Rodgers goes down week one? It made no sense, you know? And uh, they go with Zach Wilson and Trevor Simeon and Tim Boyle. And, you know, they find themselves at 6-10. and 10 And Aaron Rodgers, with an incredible rehab from that Achilles injury, could be playing right now if the Jets had won some more games. But... You know, they got nobody but to blame but themselves, and uh, we'll see. You know, they'll they'll have a healthy Aaron Rodgers next year. Hopefully, he can stay healthy, and we can see what this Jets team is capable of with a healthy Aaron Rodgers. We'll see if they sign someone like Devonte Adams on that receiving core. But uh, the the Jets' loss is the Browns' gain, and. The Browns are a super threat, so I can't wait to see what Cleveland can do in the playoffs. Uh, let's look ahead at our Week 17 predictions. Saturday night, the 11-4 and Lions at the 10-5 and Cowboys. Uh, I picked the Cowboys to win last week in Miami, but they couldn't get it done. And really the key factor here with Dallas is home field advantage. They play so much better at home. They're 7-0 and undefeated at Jerry's World in Dallas. Um, and, uh, you know, here come the Lions, and I expect the Cowboys to win this. Uh, the Lions' defense did have four interceptions last week against Nick Mullins, but at the same time they also allowed a third and 19 conversion and a third and 27 conversion. So despite the four interceptions, I'm still not feeling that confident in this Lions defense. And uh, you, if you listen to this podcast, you know I don't trust Jared Goff. He's have a, had a couple games in a row of turnover free, but that's bound to end here at some point because um, he's known for kind of turning the ball over, you know. And he, when he does have a bad game, it snowballs. And it's usually three or four turnovers. So um, I got the Cowboys at home. Jimmy Johnson is going to be inducted into the Cowboys ring of honor on Saturday night. So that's going to be cool. Uh, and I think the Cowboys, you know, are, are going to play well because of that. They're going to be inspired by that. Going to want to play well in front of the former Super Bowl champ head coach, the legendary head coach. And I expect the Cowboys to play a great game and, and win this one against the Lions. Amanda agrees with me. She's got the Cowboys here as well. So we'll see if the Lions can, can prove us both wrong on Saturday night and get to 12-4. and four, But we both have the Cowboys here getting to 11-5 and five at home on Saturday night. On Sunday... The 4-11 Patriots at the 9-6 Bills. The Bills are on a three-game winning streak, although they they had a hard-fought game against the Chargers last week. And James Cook was on fire up until last week, and then he had kind of a down week. I expect a bounce-back game here. I think New England, you know, the Patriots are going for the sweep here. They won the first matchup 29-25 in New England. Uh, so I think they're going to have the Bills' attention here. 
And I think the Bills are going to play a solid game. The Bills might blow them out here. Uh, the Bills know that every game from here on out is a must win, really. Uh, they want to finish the season out strong and potentially take a five-game winning streak into the playoffs. Week 18 is going to be everything, Bills at Dolphins. But before you get there, don't look past these Patriots. Take care of business. Get a big win. Get your fourth straight and get that big 10th win that should help them get into the playoffs. And then, then that sets up a Week 18 where the Bills could potentially steal the AFC East from the Dolphins and potentially finish as high as the two seed. So a big opportunity for Buffalo uh, on Sunday. Take care of business. Beat the Patriots. Amanda agrees with me. We're both taking the Bills here at home in Orchard Park. Um, the 7-8 and eight Falcons at the 6-9 and nine Bears. A must win for Atlanta. The Bears are not technically out of it, but they're out of it. They know it. They're not trying to make the playoffs. Um, Atlanta is, though. They're only a game back in a very competitive NFC South. And they need the Saints to beat Tampa Bay as well. But I expect the Falcons to come into Chicago and take care of business and get a, a much-needed win. You know, it's a must-win for Atlanta. Taylor Haneke came in. They benched Desmond Ritter, and Taylor Henneke came in and provided a spark last week, beating the Colts by 19. And I expect uh, Henneke to keep it going, Bijan Robinson to have a good game, and the Falcons to get a big win over the Bears and get back to 500 at 8-8. Eight and eight. Um, I'm rooting for Justin Fields to do well and finish the season out strong. But at the same time, as a Bears fan, I, I don't want them to win out because I think it helps their chances of firing the head coach, Matt Eberflus, if they lose the rest of their game. So let's go Falcons. In this one, Amanda's taking the Bears, and I'm taking the Falcons. So we'll see. I'm eight games back behind Amanda. I could have been ten games back, but I got that big win picking the Ravens over the Niners. Uh, so let's go Falcons. Get me to seven games here you know, get back into this thing. And, and the playoffs are going to be where I make my my true push here. We're going to do uh, where the first two rounds of the playoffs are two points. So she's eight points up. If I can get that down to like six points before the playoffs, then the wild card and divisional will be two points each for each game. The conference playoff, conference championship games will be three points. And the Super Bowl will be four points. I mean, you know, regular season games are one point. They, they matter, but playoffs matter more. Conference championship, picking the right team to go to the Super Bowl, that matters even more. And then, of course, the Super Bowl, picking the, the winner of the Super Bowl should matter the most. So that's what we're going to go with there. So it's an opportunity for me to get back into this and catch Amanda before the season's out, or she'll just blow me out and win by 30, like she predicts, but I don't see that happening. Uh, but she's been killing it this year. I'll give her credit for that. A great winning percentage in her picks. Um, seven and eight Raiders at the eight and seven Colts. Josh Jacobs is doubtful. He'll be a game-time decision, but Zamir White had a great game last week, so not a huge drop-off there. Michael Pittman Jr., the Colts wide receiver one, he'll be back. So that's a big gain for the Colts, who got beat by 19 last week in Atlanta. But Zach Moss is out once again. So uh, just Jonathan Taylor, really. And then you got like Trey Sermon and Tyler Goodson. Um, give me the Raiders on the road here to get a big win. Be, me and Amanda agree we're both taking the Raiders here. We're not big believers in what the Colts are doing. Gardner Minshew didn't play well last week. And the Colts are, you know, so up and down. They're hard to get behind. And we're both rooting for the Raiders um, and interim head coach Antonio Pierce. And we both like to see the Raiders finish the season out strong and see them give Antonio Pierce the full-time head coaching job. So let's go Vegas Raiders. 
Um, eight and seven Rams at the five and ten Giants. The Rams have been red hot of late. Twenty eight plus points in five straight games. Tyrod Taylor getting the start for the Giants. They bench Tommy DeVito. Um, the Rams fighting for a playoff spot with Seattle. You know it's going to come down to the wire. Who finishes better there? And the Rams have the sweep over Seattle, so the Seahawks can't afford to tie. Uh, We're both, me and Amanda, are both taking the Rams here in New York against the Giants. You know, the Rams should win that. They're playing good football of late. They should be able to get to 9-7 and and keep the pressure on Seattle. And they've got a big, you know, the Rams week 18 is at the 49ers. And so they can't afford to lose this game at the Giants because at 49ers is going to be the true test. Can they win that game? And uh, for Seattle, they're looking at, like, if we win out, the the Niners should beat the Rams. And then the Niners, you know, or the Seahawks, if they win out, then they'll have the game lead over the Rams and get that playoff spot, that wild card spot. Um, so, but we both have the Rams winning in this one. Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, even Demarcus Robinson has been balling four straight games with a touchdown, uh, and Kyron Williams. So Rams should be able to keep it rolling there on Sunday in week 17. Uh, the three and two Cardinals at the 11 and four Eagles wide receiver Hollywood Brown is out for Arizona. Head coach Jonathan Gannon going up against his former team in the Eagles. I don't see this being much of a matchup. I think the Eagles win this one easily. Amanda agrees with me. Uh, And the Eagles need to finish the season out strong. They beat the Giants. Now they need to beat the Cardinals. And then they're at the Giants to finish the season. So potentially... After being on a three-game losing streak, the Eagles could finish out on a three-game winning streak and have some good positive momentum behind them going into the playoffs. And that's what they need to do, finish out strong and uh, get that two seed in the NFC. Um, the seven. This is a great game, battle for the NFC South. The seven and eight Saints and the eight and seven Bucks. And Tampa Bay is just red hot. Four-game winning streak. Uh, the Saints are up, up against it in this one, going into Tampa against a red-hot Bucks team. Tampa Bay trying to sweep the Saints. They won the first meeting this year. And me and Amanda both agree we're going with the Bucks here at home. Baker Mayfield has been red hot. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Rashad White. They've been playing excellent football, and then that defense is starting to play better as well. So we agree. Let's go Tampa Bay here at home. Get to 9-7 and seven and drop the Saints to 7-9. and nine. The Saints are my preseason pick to win the division, but they've been so up and down. And I'm really impressed with the brand of football Tampa Bay has been playing lately. This four-game winning streak doesn't seem to be a fluke. You know, they might be able – they should be able to push it to five – and then they're at Carolina. So if the Bucks can take a six-game winning streak into the playoffs, host a playoff game, they might be for real. Uh, and then that might set up Cowboys at Bucks, And uh, that's a tough game for Dallas. I might pick Tampa Bay. Yeah, in Tampa, we know how Dallas struggles on the road. And the Bucks are red hot. So Tampa Bay, keep it up. Prove us right. Win this game and get to 9-7. and seven. Um, the 11 and 4 49ers at the 4 and 11 Commanders. The big news for Washington is they've benched Sam Howell, so Jacoby Brissett will start at quarterback. Uh, Chase Young going up against his former team. Brock Purdy coming off a four interception game. And this is a get right game for San Francisco, a bad Commanders team. The Niners should be able to take care of their business and get this win. Gets a 12-4 and four bounce back win after a tough loss to the Ravens. And, yeah, the Commanders have lost six in a row. So they're not playing good football right now. And uh, so this is a, an excellent opportunity for the Niners to get back, bounce back in a big way. 
and you know erase that memory of of a tough loss to the Ravens. Mina, Amanda, both taking the 49ers here on the road, and Brock Purdy, right? No four interception game here. Have a clean game, you know. Switch it around. Four touchdowns, no, no picks, and get back to playing 49er football. Uh, no faith in the Commanders. Jacoby Brissett. You know, he'll, he'll play better than Sam Howell has been lately, but we don't think that's enough to get the win against the 49ers defense, and, and that offense is so explosive for San Francisco. Uh, the 2-13 and 13 Panthers at the 8-7 and seven Jags. The big news here is Trevor Lawrence is out, so C.J. Beathard will get the start for Jacksonville. That breaks Trevor Lawrence's consecutive game starting streak he's never missed a start in his nfl career and now he will so can the jags the jags are on a four game losing streak at the worst time of the year and the panthers like we've been saying you know on this podcast are always a a get right game you know a bad team an opportunity for a, a team to get right against a struggling panthers team with no Trevor Lawrence makes this game a little bit more tricky. The Panthers have been playing better football the last two weeks, but I'm riding with Jacksonville here. Uh, even with C.J. Beathard, uh, I think the Jags can get it done. Um, you know, but, you know, and they need to finish strong. You know, they're on a four-game losing streak. They got the Texans and Colts right there. They're tied with them. And if they – get tripped up, then they miss the playoffs. Only one team out of that division is going to make the playoffs. So the Jags need to finish strong, go 2-0 and in the month of January, and it starts with beating the Panthers uh, on Sunday. Um, for Carolina, or for Jacksonville, only three teams in NFL history have gone winless in the month of December and made the playoffs. So they're up against it. They need to uh, finish strong. I guess this is the, it'll will be December thirty first. So one more game in the month of December, but still, uh, you know, finish strong, Jacksonville. Don't allow this losing streak to to make you miss the playoffs, Jacksonville fans and the Jaguars front office are not going to be happy if. They end up missing the playoffs this year after an eight and three start. So, no Trevor Lawrence, you're up against it. But a bad Panthers team, I think C.J. Beathard will do enough for the Jags to get this win. Um, Amanda agrees with me, but she might not know Trevor Lawrence is out. I'll have to double check with her. She might end up picking the Panthers. But even with I know Trevor Lawrence is out, I'm still picking the Jags here. This is the game of the week right here. The 11-4 and four Dolphins at the 12-3 and three Ravens. Battle for the one seed in the AFC. Wide receiver Jalen Waddell not, not expected to play for Miami. Um, so that's a, a negative for the Dolphins here. I, I don't think the Dolphins are capable of going into Baltimore and getting this win. I just think the Ravens are the best team in football right now, and they're playing elite defense. And they're not going to allow Miami to, to come in here and throw up 30-plus points on them. And I think the Ravens, you know, Lamar Jackson's my MVP pick. I'm confident in the Ravens in this game. Last week, Miami proved that they can beat a team with a winning record, a good team like the Cowboys, in Miami. Now, this is a much tougher test, a much tougher team on the road. Give me the Ravens here. This is a no-brainer for me. Um, you know, the Ravens just kicked the 49ers' ass, and they're on a five-game winning streak playing some of the best football in the entire league. Lamar is an MVP candidate, and I think the Ravens have another back-to-back -back statement wins and win this one against the Dolphins. So Ravens an opportunity to get, go into the playoffs red hot, and for the Dolphins, if they lose this game, then that sets up a winner-take-all Week 18 Bills at Dolphins to see who takes the AFC East. 
And I, I'm rooting for the Ravens for that reason as well, because that'll make for a great game, Week 18, Bills at Dolphins. And uh, just a little preview, I got the Bills winning that if that's the case. So, uh, you know, the narrative with Miami could change rather quickly if they blow a division lead late in the year and, and have a two-game losing streak going into the playoffs. So if you're a Dolphins fan, don't let that even get started. Win in Baltimore, but to me, that's a tough task. Uh, the 5-10 and 10 Titans at the 8-7 and 7 Texans. C.J. Stroud is back. He clears concussion protocol and will start, which is perfect timing for the Texans. Um, and the big question is, can rookie C.J. Stroud lead these Texans into the playoffs and to a division championship in his first year? And head coach, rookie head coach D'Amico Ryans, the Jags have opened the door. And this is an opportunity for C.J. Stroud to take advantage of that. Uh, I expect me and Amanda both expect the Texans to win this game at home and get to 9-7, and seven, which, you know, puts a lot of pressure on Jacksonville to win without Trevor Lawrence just to keep pace with this Texans team. So we'll see how that goes. Um, the 8-7 and seven Steelers at the 8-7 and seven Seahawks. This is a great matchup in Seattle. Mason Rudolph will start once again for the Steelers. Kenny Pickett wants to start, but it sounds like Mason Rudolph is going to get the start. Um, you know, Rudolph, you know, led the Steelers to a big win on Christmas weekend, but Christmas is over. So he's no longer a reindeer. Now he's just Mason, and I think that he's not going to get it done this week. I got Geno Smith and the Seahawks. You know, DK, it's a great wide receiver matchup with DK Metcalf against George Pickens. Um, Kenneth Walker over there for Seattle. But give me the Seahawks at home to get a big win and keep pace with the Rams and to get a wild card playoff berth. So give me Seattle at home over the Steelers. Amanda agrees with me. We're both taking the Seahawks at home. Uh, the 5-10 and 10 Chargers at the 7-8 and 8 Broncos. Amanda has taken the Chargers. The big news out of this game is Russell Wilson getting benched. Uh, the Broncos blew a big opportunity against the Patriots in Denver last weekend and uh, fell also 7-8, and eight, you know. And uh, Sean Payton benches Russell Wilson. And I can't believe that. It seems like, a you know, Russell Wilson's time in Denver is over. He's going to be released in March and will be a free agent, which, which is just insane. Uh, Russell Wilson's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. His stats back it up. He leads the league in fourth-quarter comebacks and game-winning touchdown drives. Uh I don't understand it. I don't know. But apparently Sean Payton and Russell Wilson isn't a good mix. They don't have good chemistry. We saw Sean Payton yelling at Russell Wilson uh, in the Lions game. But I think the Broncos have a lot more issues, a lot bigger issues than just the quarterback position. So benching Russell Wilson, moving on from Russell Wilson, doesn't seem to be the right move in my opinion. He's kind of being treated poorly on the way out the door. Uh, so that makes this matchup Easton Stick versus Jarrett Stidham. Amanda's taking the Chargers here. Um, I'm a, I am was leaning Broncos here, but the Broncos are so bad. This is a tough one. I th I'm going to go Broncos here and Jarrett Stidham, but – just, you know, to try to pick up a cheap win on Amanda, get me to, you know, closer to, to in the, in the you know, in our picks. I don't trust Easton Stick and the Chargers. That's what it boils down to. They looked better against the Bills, but I think the Broncos are the better team here. I think they'll find a way to get the win against the Chargers and get back to 500 to 8-8. Eight eight. Um... Let's go with the 8-7 and seven Bengals at the 9-6 and six Chiefs. Uh, this is Two-Face, Jake Browning. We call him, he's either Jake Brady 
or he's Jake Grossman. For a you know three game winning streak, he was Jake Brady, as Amanda likes to call him. And then last week against the Steelers, I dubbed him Jake Grossman. So, which Jake Browning are we gonna get? Tom Brady looking Jake Browning or Rex Grossman looking Jake Browning? Uh, they're in Arrowhead against the Kansas City Crybabies. I mean the Kansas City Chiefs. And, uh, you know, we'll see if the Chiefs can bounce back after a terrible loss on, uh, what was that, on Christmas Day uh, against the Raiders. Drops and turnovers. This Chiefs team does not look the same. They're three and five in their last eight games. They're having sideline episodes every game with Mahomes yelling at people and Kelsey slamming his helmet. And, uh, you know, the leadership seems to be having issues. Kelsey's among the leaders in drops, not just Valdez Scaling, not just Kadarius Tony, but Travis Kelsey, you know, is up there in drops. So the Chiefs seem dysfunctional. There, there seems to be some issues there. I think that Jake Browning plays better in this game. Uh, the Bengals are getting Cam Taylor Britt back at corner, which is a huge boost. And Jamar Chase, I expect to play as well. So um, give me the Bengals to go into Kansas City and get a big win here and continue the the Chiefs slide Uh, because I think it's dysfunctional. I think there's something wrong in Kansas City, and they're not playing good football right now. Amanda's going with the Chiefs. Uh, She's probably pissed off the way Jake Browning let her down last week. But – Nothing makes me happier than to see the Chiefs taking L's of late. And I'm going to ride with that. Let's go Bengals. Let's get to 9-7. and seven. Let's go Jake Browning, Jamar Chase, and those boys. Uh, let's go to Sunday Night Football. The 7-8 and eight Green Bay Packers at the 7-8 and eight Minnesota Vikings. There's an opportunity here for the Packers to backdoor their way into the playoffs. There really is as a seven seed. If they win out, if they beat the Vikings and they beat the Bears, there's an opportunity for the Packers to slide their way into the playoffs. So um, that's going to be interesting for sure. Can they go into Minnesota and get a big win on Sunday Night Football? The Vikings have benched quarterback Nick Mullins after his four-interception performance against the Lions. And they will start rookie quarterback Jaron Hall. Uh, So advantage Green Bay there, in my opinion. Christian Watson is doubtful with a hamstring, so that doesn't help. But I just trust the Packers more here. I I think they can go into Minnesota and get a big win. Uh, And uh, Minnesota's struggling. They've lost four of their last five. I don't trust the Vikings right now. They had a great opportunity to – beat the Lions last week and couldn't get it done. Um, So give me Green Bay on the road here. Amanda agrees. Her Packer fan ass is taking the Packers. Uh, And, uh, you know, she doesn't believe that they're going to make the playoffs, but beat the Vikings and then you got a home game against the Bears. There's a way to get into the playoffs. So we'll see if they can get it done. So it's going to be an exciting week 17. I can't wait for tomorrow night. Uh, Lions at Cowboys, and then a full slate on Sunday. No Monday night football this week, but all day Sunday, and then Sunday night football is a great game as well. Uh, Ravens-Dolphins is a game of the week, and Lions-Cowboys tomorrow night is going to be a lot of fun as well. So uh, appreciate the support. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Stay tuned for... Uh, our future interviews. We got a bunch of former players coming on for the playoffs, and uh, those are going to be a lot of fun. So uh, stay tuned for those. Hit that subscribe button. Tune in. Amanda will be will be back for the week seventeen recap. And appreciate the support, guys. Peace out.